Warning, explicit content. Blood, guts, swearing, lots of bad words, adult themes, no nudity though, lots of violence, did I say violence? Viewer's discretion is advised. Welcome back, and I hope you guys are ready for another exciting episode of Pathfinder's Wrath of the Righteous. Um, of course, we're going to be screaming, yelling at the dice roller, and just generally being like, Aah! but you know, um, it's all in good fun. So let's enjoy the story. Let's kill some monsters, do some dungeons, and uh, see if uh, see what comes next. So let's go and hop into it. Did we not get anything special from even from him? Man, that sucks. God, how dare you not have special loot? <laughs> That probably goes to the palace. Oh, I need to go through this to do the portal up. So I want to go down here. That's where another group of people or demons ambushed me. More commoners. Come at me, I dare you. Oh, okay. attack them now or is it like fucked up yeah it's fucked up okay so weird is there trouble? well yeah people want to attack us on the street we got a bunch of falchions plus two, though. To the rapture of rupture. You are surrounded by the sound of melodious voice that seems to be coming from the stone pillars all around you. Greetings, esteemed guests. Are you here to seek the hospitality of the illustrious Lady Valexia, or are you here on other business? The entrance to this manor greets you politely. It is far more gracious than the impudent, foul-mouthed door at the Ten Thousand Delights. Uh, I seek Valadia's, Lady Valexia's patronage and would like to enter. Welcome to the Rapture of Rupture, esteemed lady. Lady Valexia will be notified of your arrival right away. Oop, what's that? Crafting materials. The demon that comes to greet you has blonde hair and is wearing a modest but elegant dress. She seems surprisingly friendly. Her soft voice and impeccable manners seem out of place in a city where extreme passions and boundless indulgence prevail over temperance and moderation. A new guest has arrived. How exciting! A mortal from Galarian if my eyes do not deceive me. What brings you to my manor? This is all very intriguing. Valexia, we have clashed in battle many times. Her claws were always stained with the blood of those she killed on the battlefield. Now, she looks different, but I am certain that her true nature remains unchanged. She is still violent and dangerous. You must be on your guard, champion. I am the commander of the Crusaders, Crusaders of Galarian. 
I'm a famous warrior known for my amazing power. I seek the honor of your attention and the pleasure of your inestimable company. Alexia answers politely, but without much enthusiasm. Known for your amazing powers, here in the abyss, you will need to... You'll need more than power and influence to impress others. Your special abilities will hardly give you the same status as they did on your homeworld. The demons will not see you as worthy of glory and respect until you demonstrate what makes you unique. However, you've managed to pique my interest, and I would be glad to make your acquaintance. There is no need to bother with titles. You can simply call me Valexia. And you are? Don't put your trust in her words, champion. Valexia's temper is like the wind that blows across Ishiar. It changes constantly and bodes poorly for us, no matter what direction it turns. You must watch her as vigilantly as a skilled sailor watches the horizon. You can call me Guru. Guru. Alexia rolls your name slowly across her tongue, as if tasting the way it sounds. What an unusual name. Certainly not in keeping with the spirit of the abyss, but I like it. You know, Guru, I have a proposal for you. Let's pick a place that's nice and romantic and go on an innocent little date together. It'll be a chance for us to get to know one another. How about the Battle Bliss? It offers simple spirit entertainment and it'll be a good place for us to talk undisturbed. No one will notice us because they'll be too busy watching the fights in the pit. We can have a nice conversation and learn more about one another. I'll be waiting for you at the arena. I hope you'll accept my invitation. I will be very disappointed if you deny me the pleasure of your company. I have to go. Valexia smiles warmly, and she bids you farewell. Please, don't stay away too long. Come back soon. The world is full of wonder. The world is full of wonder. I guess it's cute. I don't I don't know about that. Okay. There's loot right there. So exciting. Uh, kind of. A chest up there. Friendship lasts forever. Uh, sometimes. Oh my god. Oh, uh, having a gray boy. Good. There, you don't have twelve negative levels now. Oh, yeah, he can. Easy. Mm, goggles of piercing gaze. Wow. The goggles grant their wearer plus one insight bonus on attack and damage rolls against outsiders, as well as plus ten competence bonus on persuasion skill checks. What am oh yeah, I'm using the broken trickster. Looks like we have another one up there. A bunch of aristocrats. More like aristocraps. Mm, got him. All right, we go down. I guess it's time for a sass on guild. Oh my god. 
Oh, this island moves out. <laughs> like, I wonder who's giving me a headache. Flash markets. And everything in the flesh markets is actually gone like all the NPCs. So before you do the whole free slaves thing, um, uh, make sure you, you don't want anything else. We're gonna save before we go into the Assassin's Guild. The demon standing before you clearly has a penchant for jewelry. His fingers are covered in rings, three gold chains encircle his neck, and four bejeweled earrings sparkle on each of his ears. However, such exquisite adornments are not enough to hide the fact that he is a hardened warrior and a ruthless killer. His face and hands are covered in long, badly healed scars, and he moves as gracefully as most skilled swordsmen. The demon's lips curl into a satisfying sneer as he greets you loudly. Look who's here. It's the arrogant Galarian who disposed of our poor Willidus. He catches your eye and frowns slightly, giving a pointed glance toward his bodyguards. You are about to do something really stupid and start a massacre here, right? We can just talk? Uh, who are you? The leader of the Assa Guild of Assassins? Yes, and I'm proud of it. The Abyss is full of butchers and monsters, so anyone... Who chooses to be an assassin among the monsters and butchers commands a high level of respect. If they live long enough to make a name for themselves, of course. My guild attracts assassins from many planes. No one hires us for simple things like murdering noisy neighbors or cutting the throat of a cheating merchant. As I'm sure you know, it's easier and cheaper to do that yourself. And there's no need to get assassins involved. No, if someone turns to an assassin, it means that the victim is a dangerous, cunning, and well-protected target. I've heard a lot about you. Yaz, you're the head of the highest reputable guild that operates on many planes besides the Abyss. Many of my colleagues would consider it an honor to work alongside you, unlike myself. Nod the toward the projection. This horn thing is one of yours, isn't it? Horzala? Horzal yes. This little demoness is one of my most useful servants. Besides, it's not very prestigious to have a daughter of Baphomet. Besides, it's so very prestigious to have a daughter of Baphomet working under you. Yaz glances at the, the horned demon with a mix of condescension and possessiveness. She starts fix, She stares fixedly at the floor. Yes, master, I am your servant. For a fleeting moment, you notice a shadow of angry displeasure across her face. A spark of fear flashes in Yaz's eyes, like a boy who realizes he's gone too far when testing the patience of his parents. Tell me the truth right now. Yaz raises his hands apologetically. Several rings glitter on his fingers. Fine, fine. I was the one who actually gave Graybor, gave Graybor assignments. I needed to, to light a little fire underneath his cauldron, where so many minions of demons lords are being mixed together. I ordered him to murder those demons in Canabras, and I put a hit out on Derezerand. Although, that ugly idiot didn't bother me at all, but he was an ugly idiot indeed, and a vengeful one to boot. That's why I gave Graybor a dagger that was only supposed to wound the Baylor, and that is why using Willidus' name was important. It was a perfect hand of cards. Derezerand survived after suffering a painful, humiliating wound at the hand of a mortal's... at... by... a mortal's hand. No offense, of course. The Baylor couldn't simply let that go, and so he started a vendetta against Willidus, dragging other Discorites into it. And that was my goal all along, because Willidus was my real target, a target that was very difficult to reach. Yaw seems to reveal in his own cleverness. He's 
Yon seems to revel in his own cleverness. He smirks and smiles with smug satisfaction. The dwarf gives a grim chuckle and whispers loudly enough to be heard. People like you are why us assassins have such a lousy reputation. No respect for agreements. Say nothing. Graybor mutters darkly. Staying quiet, Commander. I have a few words to say to this fellow when the time is right. You are head of the Assassin's Guild. Why didn't you send your underlings after Willidus? Yans grimaces slightly and replies with a visible displeasure. Who says I didn't? I lost a number of capable killers. He collects himself quickly, and the arrogant smile returns to his face. And yet, as you can see, I found a more elegant and economical way to execute this plan. I won't lie to you, this kind of plotting makes me very proud of my own guile. My assistants made sure that every larva in the city knew about the bounty on Willidus' head. I knew that Greybor returning returned to Alashunera and decided to use him once more. Just like poor Derezarand, he had no idea he was merely a pawn of mine. Just as I envisioned, you didn't linger and paid Willidus a visit. I had no doubt that Paranoic were trying to kill anyone who crossed his doorstep, but I expected you to overcome him, and I was right. Greybor snorts derivously. I thought your guild had the best contractors. After hearing your story, they sound like amateurs to me. Why did you do all of this? For money and power, of course. This has been my primary motivation for many years now. Somebody wanted that old woodlouse dead, and clever Yazas fulfilled their wish, with the expectation of being showered in privileges and treasures. You're getting a share of those privileges and treasures, by the way. I trust you're not going to refuse the reward provided for freelance operatives. Trust me, the sum is considerable. Yans turns his attention to Greyborn and adds, I haven't forgotten about you either. You'll be rewarded in proportion to your truly astonishing lethality. Oh, I'll take the gold, don't you worry. The demon flashes his perfect sharp teeth and then snaps his fingers. Suddenly a thick purse appears in front of you, smelling of exquisite perfume. I had no doubt we'll come to an understanding. After all, we share a common language, the language of gold. Continue. Since it was my reputation that was damaged as a result of this plot, I consider it fair to lay claim to 20% of the gold of percent of the total fee. Give 20% to Greybor. That is only fair. Greybor nods and gives a grunt of satisfaction. I appreciate your integrity when it comes to business, Guru. As for you, Greybor, you've proven, proven your competence. As a token of apology, allow me to offer you a membership in my Assassin's Guild. Consider it recognition of your talent that you have long desired. I promise you prestige, respect, and truly staggering fees. Of course, I won't demand that you sever your current contract. You may claim your well-deserved place in our guild when it expires. So then, what do you say? Will I be welcoming you to the big league? Graybor turns to you with a very serious expression. His voice is reserved and formal. Guru, we are bound by an active agreement, and therefore I must consult your opinion on this invitation. Are you truly prepared to throw in your lot with the with demons? With a heavy sigh, the dwarf looks you straight in the eye. Is there really much of a difference between me and them? They are the product of the worst parts of our mortal souls. They are sin incarnate. Many say that the same thing about me. I was never a coward, so I'm able to admit that my soul is black and evil. I murder others for money, and I will never become a respectable member of society, a friend, or a father. But I'm tired of asking forgiveness for what I am. Here, I will not be judged for my profession. Greybor clenches his fist and mutters through gritted teeth. I am not the freak or monster they think me back on Galarian. How dare they hire me to murder their enemies and then despise me for my profession. They'll treat me differently in the abyss. The demons respect my skills. They will treat me as a professional, not a criminal or a blackguard. It's strange to say this, but I don't feel out of place here. Have you thought about quitting the business and become what? A farmer? A butler? Or maybe an innkeeper? One of those who tell tall tales about their adventures, adventurous youth, and to drink to drunk patrons. My soul is that of a wanderer and a killer. My art is the only source of pride, and abandoning it would make me useless in my own eyes. Believe me, I already tried to settle down and find an honest job, and nothing good came of it. I quit my profession only when I, I'm judged by Phrasma herself. It's your decision to make. 
Grabor studies you for a moment, then nods respectfully. Such words make me respect you even more. Believe me, I appreciate your willingness to let this decision be entirely my own. The dwarf does not waste words when he looks at Yaz. Where do I sign? What are you talking about? We're not devils, after all. Yaz laughs and claps his hand loudly. Splendid! You've got a bright future here, my diminutive yet deadly friend. Yaz gives a bored yawn, and then is a note of finality to his tone. Well, this was a very enlightening conversation, but I see no reason why we should continue. You've received your answer, and you should probably be on your way. Meanwhile, I should get back to plotting another bloody and, bloody and violent murder. Have a good day. After a suspicious glance in Yaz's direction, Greyboard turns to you. Indeed, this was an unexpected meeting. If you want to discuss what happened privately, I'm at your service, Commander. And Yaz's story thingy is done. Alright, back to the Nexus. So we can grab other people. And just like that, the episode for today is over. The narrator's a little tired. You gotta give him some props for, you know, going at it. But thank you for hanging out and watching Pathfinder's Wrath of the Righteous. Hopefully you guys had fun. Um, so if you did, do the thing. You know, like, comment, subscribe, share it. Um, that, the link for the previous episodes and next episodes should be in the descriptions. Unless they are not out yet. Um, if you want them early, you could always beg for them in the comments, maybe. Uh, tell me your favorite part of each episode. Let me know you guys are enjoying it. Um, and with that, I will let you guys get back to your day, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you for hanging out.